there are just some of those banners in the game that are a little bit tricky to paint. And I'm sure everyone's fan favourite is Boromir's. This highly detailed banner is definitely up there for one that needs to be in a swanky new plastic kit. But until that day, this video is going to break down how I painted the details on Boromir's banner. Firstly, I popped on a vinyl glove because I do not want to rub off all the details from the rest of the miniature as I paint. And just added some slightly watered down black to the side of the banner closest to the wooden shaft. This is where those teeny tiny markings are going to be painted on in a moment. Now, as you can see on this banner, there are eight icons that can be painted on, but I'm only going to be painting on five. A, because I'm just, well, not that good, but B, it looks a little bit chaotic and messy. So we're going to simplify things. And to break things down into smaller bite-sized chunks, we're going to paint each symbol individually with a bunch of lines, and then blocking some colour in here and there. The main thing is, is to not feel overwhelmed by the whole banner design, and just have a go. And if you do manage to go wrong here or there, then just paint the black colour back in. I managed to do this a number of times whilst producing this video. And next up for the black and yellow icon, I can see that there are eight individual yellow triangles. Instead of trying to pick out painting eight identical triangles, which is a task and a half by itself, we're going to produce four larger yellow triangles and then paint back the negative space of the black. I did something very similar with this Mordor Orc banner where the initial shape of the skull was painted in first, and then the details such as the nose, eyes and the teeth were then cut back in by painting black on top of the white. And black being black, it's much easier to cut back in over a brighter colour such as this white on the banner or the yellow for Boromir's. I find for myself that starting from the middle and then working outwards is the best method for me. But for yourself, you might find that going from the top to the bottom may work better. However, for me, I know if I do the middle one first, then I should have around about the same amount of space either side for the other four. Again, nothing too fancy for this icon, just a whole bunch of neatly painted lines will then create the design. And coming in with a black paint here and there, just to tidy things up. See? Breaking things down into bite-sized chunks. For the final symbols, I decided to go for the blue and black diamonds that you can see on the banner. I did initially try to place a green background for them, but it didn't look good. So I decided to keep it black. A fine tip brush is key when painting details such as this. And make sure that you add a small amount of water to your paint on the palette, just to keep it moist for as long as possible. This will make it much easier and give you the time that you'll need to paint these cute tiny little details. And now for the main event, the tree. I sometimes find that adding a faint dot here and there will give me the general idea of what the shape and the height of the design is going to be. For the branches, I start to map out exactly where they will attach themselves onto the main stem of the tree. And this was done by painting on some faint lines which cut across our main vertical stem. Now that we have an idea of positioning, we're going to start bulking out our tree by adding some branches. I find the best way to do this for myself is to paint it one side first and then replicate it on the other straight away. This will help you achieve your overall symmetry for your design. As I mentioned earlier in the video, maybe one day this will be a beautiful plastic kit. I mean, we've already had Faramir, so Denethor is probably not best pleased with that. My question of the day for you guys will be, what plastic kits would you like to see in the range? Cue time lapse! Yep, 
You can see that the shape is coming along nicely, so we're starting to thicken up the lines. And you'll notice that I'm still sticking to painting one side and then the other straight away. Just to maintain the best symmetry that I can. Just like what we did with the symbols earlier, break this tree down into smaller segments to help you on your way. Such as with the initial sketch of the dots and the lines, the bark, then the branches, and then finally the outer leaves and the roots. So we've done the tree once, but imagine doing this three more times in the kit. We've just got to be a steady eddy for a few more times to finish off this banner, and we're going to switch over to a different colour now of dark stone. And this is going to be used on the banner border as well as the squiggly line bits on the left hand side. Once again, a fine detail brush and some slightly watered down paint is key here. It will enable you to paint some nice thin lines on the banner, and the paint will also run on pretty smooth. So let's break this part of the design down into some bite sized chunks. First off, we're painting three horseshoe shapes to go inside of the fly end. And from them, there'll be four sets of lines going towards the middle part of the banner. The middle of these two lines will then start to curve out to create a wave. And then swing back in again. Kind of like a light bulb shape. And then finally, we're going to paint a double curved line, which is going to snake in and out of our light bulb shape. And attached to our other two outer lines that we painted earlier. And for any mistakes that you might have made, especially if you made some lines a bit too thick like what I have, then you could come back with your original banner colour. And for me, this was Banshee Brown. It is quite a difficult banner to paint, and especially if you are doing freehand. Sure, you might need to go back in with your original colour here and there to make some tweaks, or if you don't like it, then you can just paint back over it. But I think the main thing is just to have a go, because that's how we learn and expand our painting knowledge and our skill level. I mean, a few years ago, I would not have even tried freehand because, well, I couldn't. But as you do this more and more, then you get used to it. And you can also come up with some very, very cool designs. So what freehand have you guys done for your miniatures in the past? Let me know in the comments because, well, it's always good to read them and see what people are up to. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've seen an insight as to how I break down painting freehand on miniatures. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep on hobbying.